Hello, I'm Steve Mee from the iPassport development team and in this session we're going to look at the new document review workflow that we'll be launching in iPassport in version 355. So let's take a look at the new process. Right, the first thing is it looks a little different. This would be a typical setup if you want to manage everything manually. So the idea is the document's due for review. We're not going to send this through to any reviewers. We want the document owner to, to manually complete this review cycle and we don't have any approval step. If you want to handle things manually, you can absolutely do it and this is how it will look by default. Let's edit this and, and add some, some reviewers. So we can say, first of all, Alan needs to review this. And we have Elizabeth and Helen. And finally, we want this to go through to Arthur and Bob. Once you've set up your review rounds, these can be moved up and down. They can be deleted. And you can say, everybody in this step must complete a review before it continues. Or you can say just any one of these people. If this is set to any one, then if Bob completes the review, Arthur's review task would be invalidated. He can still go in and review the document, but it won't hold up the workflow. So the workflow will continue. If changes are requested along the way, then once all the rounds are completed, uh, the workflow stops and a document owner needs to come through and either approve or reject those changes as you'd currently expect in the system. Any approved changes would mean a new draft document would be created and those changes could be implemented and, and we go through the normal approval process then. If all changes are rejected or if no changes are raised at all, then we can choose what happens next. So you can still go through this manual step. You can still say, once all the reviews are complete, we want the document owner to check that the reviews have been completed thoroughly and manually close out this review step. And that would mean the document owner would set the next review date at that point. Or we can have our passport do this automatically. So this would mean once these rounds of review are complete, there are no change requests, we want iPassport to manually set the next review date for 12 months time. We've added an additional option here. So the way we would normally calculate uh, the next review date at the moment would be based on when the document review is completed. So if a document is due for review on April the 1st, but it's actually completed late on May the 1st, then currently iPassport would set the document's next review date to May the 1st. We've had requests from some customers that they'd like to lock their document review into April the 1st every year, regardless of when the review actually takes place. So that's what this option does. This option allows you to say, even if the document review is completed one month late, we don't care. We will always set the review 12 months on April the 1st um, and lock that period into place. The final thing to point out here is an approval step. So this is really aimed at situations where you may have, say, a lab director who needs to sign off on the review. So this person isn't going to actually perform any tasks. They're literally going to rubber stamp that the review is completed. So once this is all in place, even if you have a manual review step where a document owner comes through, says, yes, the review is complete. Here's the next review date then it would go on to your lab director and the lab director gets a task to say, I need to approve this. They click approve and, and their name is stamped against the document as being the person who finalized this review and on this date. And that wraps up the whole review workflow. So we can save that there. So this obviously shows you how to create a document review workflow on a single document, which is how, how we currently manage uh, review settings in iPassport at the moment. Uh, with this new development, we've built a pool of workflows that you can draw from. So this will be expanded in the future. Right now, we only have review workflows in here. There will be more workflows added to this area as, as we go forward. If I create a new workflow here for the ATC departments, I'll call 
call it ATC workflow and we'll create it. So the idea here is I may have one department, all the documents in that department could be reviewed by the same people. So I can set this up in just a single place. So I can say these two people, only one of them needs to review. And then once it's complete, we'll set the review for 24 months, always on a set date. And we want our lab director, Helen, to finally sign this off. Um, now, assigning this to documents, we can go into the document tab. We can say, I want to add this to specific documents. Perform a search and then just go through and click to, to add very quickly this, this, um, this workflow to those documents. The other way to see this is to go into the document itself. So if we go back to our document, into review settings, instead of using a custom workflow, I can choose my new ATC workflow. So I can see this, it's visible. I can't edit it from this point. It's locked down. Um, but now the document will follow this shared workflow. And we can see that now if I go back into the workflow, click on ATC workflow, and I can see that one document uses this workflow. And there's our documents. Now, if we want every single document in the ATC department to use a particular workflow, we can go into organizational unit settings. I'm on the ATC department. And if I go through to document review settings, for each document type, I can set the default workflow. So for SOPs, I can say any new SOP in this department should use the ATC workflow. And now when I create a document, that will already be reconfigured. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you do have any feedback, we would absolutely love to hear from you. So please do get in touch.